It's been a while since we all have been gathered here at W42. Studying remotely is pretty hard. That's why Christopher and I in the chat chamber have decided to talk about mental health studying during pandemic with some of your peers. Who doesn't miss being late for a lecture and stumbling upon somebody from the administration and saying good morning to them or waving your law and business friends on the way to the toilet. If previously one of your habits was to run to Narvesan in your 15 minute break or go with your mates to play table football, then now it's walking with your dog, trying to get out of bed on time and switch on camera sometimes during your remote learning lectures. However, what is most confusing about this is that something is really different. And this is something that we have discussed in the 10th episode of the Chat Chamber podcast by RGSL. See Alexander and Jonathan speak about their conclusions and insights in studying in the COVID pandemic. It's Chat Chamber o'clock. It's Chat Chamber o'clock. Uh, we can start. This is the 10th episode of the Chat Chamber. And this is a special episode because, unlike other times, we are very glad to host our own peers, our own school students. And uh, before even we start the introduction, there is one elephant in the room. What kind of? The elephant in the room is that we all have been or are at an Erasmus. And that will be something that we will probably be speaking today as well. But Definitely. there is also another elephant in the room, in my opinion. Me? Uh, no, I was thinking about mental the health. COVID and mental health issues okay. that probably are very, very, very impor important in any situation, but uh, especially during COVID times. And uh, yeah, I would like to introduce our lovely guests here. Let's start, ladies first. Alexander Alexeyev, who is a second year student, uh, was also just uh, on an Erasmus, a uh, law and diplomacy. And so where, where were you at Erasmus? Yeah, so I just have arrived uh, from my Erasmus uh, semester at the University of Graz in Austria, which I truly enjoyed. Mm -hmm. So I'm here in Latvia for a month already. It's interesting. It's really interesting to be back, but I'm truly glad that I'm back. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And and I, I think that uh, probably there's also another like culture shock when you go back, right? And, and then you start to accommodate again. You know, it's actually interesting because I left in August and everything was open and mm -hmm. everything was green, you know, it's summer, it's truly warm. And I come back and it's uh, 31st of January and everywhere is the snow mm -hmm. and it's cold yeah. and everything is closed and it feels like apocalypse or something. Yeah. I'm like, what yeah. happened? No. Oh, yeah. And I mean, it's normally in Austria also everything was closed. So it's not like something new for me, mm -hmm. but just like, this change of the situation when you left, everything was like green, warm, and like everything is open, mm -hmm. the life is going on, and everything is wonderful, and you come back and it's completely different. So that was the shock. Okay, we have, so we have this experience now that a person that has been, uh, you know, just uh, out, out of an Erasmus and, and, and understanding how it is to be normal again, and that there is, of course, uh, also a very, I think, uh, you have a very interesting story, Jonathan. Jonathan Cohen, who is, on an Erasmus at the moment at RGSL, he, uh, in normal times, he is a uh, Sciences Po, uh, Saint Germain, uh, en lay student, as I understand, right? Uh, I was trying my best. I was trying my best, really. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. But yeah, and, uh, and uh, I think what is really interesting that you are an Erasmus student for all the years, so really in understanding what a pandemic in Latvia under means and, and how to study being, you know, in Erasmus experience. So how, how is it? It's going pretty well, actually, despite the, the COVID crisis, obviously. When I arrived, it was, uh, it was pretty open. Uh, it was at the at mid-August. Mid um, and until, you know, the end of September, it was pretty good. Uh, everything was open. Everything was, you know, innocent. It was an innocent life. But then COVID came. I, will, I wouldn't say it followed me because, you know, I wouldn't bring the curse. Yeah. But um, but despite that, it's it's going pretty well. You know, culturally, it's it's good, it's good. Christopher, don't be shy. Just share your experience. You're in Erasmus right now. Yeah, I just started my Erasmus as, as well uh, in February, so it's one month already. Actually, time flies, and uh, it's uh, well. Technically, I'm in. T theoretically, I'm in Belgium right now. <laughs> uh, in next to Brussels, there's a. A village called Louvain-la-Neuve, 
uh, in which there is the Uni Université Catholique de Louvain. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm enjoying myself there, uh, trying to practice French. I have French lessons. In my opinion, that is the like the most difficult subject there at the moment uh, because, you know, it's completely something different. If, if in, in social sciences there are some kind of spillover effect from learning one thing that you can then refer to and write, then just learning another language is like learning another code, learning how to walk again. And, and I, I, it's really important to be in that environment. So I really understand from understand why it's really important to be on spot in the Erasmus experience and, and not perhaps online. But I hope to, in, in, in a few months, perhaps uh, be there, you know, see some Belgium. But also, I wouldn't say that I, uh, that I mind being here. I really enjoy here, you know, having podcasts and, 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 and uh, as well as uh, not really stressing out about uh, independent living, which would, of course, be useful. But, uh, but anyways, Marta? <laughs> you can also share your experience, don't be shy. Yeah, well, I'm a senior uh, in that sense because I was on my Erasmus more than a year ago when it started. Uh, I'm very thankful that I had this experience before COVID because I got to experience everything. I traveled around, not only Norway, because I was in University of Bergen. Uh, in, um, and uh, I managed to even fly to uh, Poland and then to Spain during my <laughs> Erasmus experience. So it was actually traveling around Europe and not only, you know, in this one state. Overall, my experience was amazing. I managed to get to know beautiful places and uh, I even started a new hobby. I went hiking a lot and um, with a group of wonderful Germans and Russians because Erasmus students tend to stick together and not so much merge with the locals. And that is one of the Erasmus main problems that they try to tackle and uh, they are doing well. And I think that Erasmus is one of the greatest experiences uh, in my life uh, right now that I have had. I think oh. unlike, unlike us, you have had the on-spot Erasmus experience, yes, which is of yes. course interesting <laughs> also. But uh, you know, a buzzword came, uh, a buzzword just wrong, and then hiking, right? As I understand, uh, Jonathan, you have also developed this uh, during here. Yes, in Latvia, you know, Latvia is not a country with you know, with you know big cities and big entertainments. You know, in the Western, um, in the Western meaning, uh, you have these forests, like fifty-three percent of your national territory. Indeed. Forest, <laughs> that's mm -hmm. that's good, that's a lot, and um, yeah, basically it, it helps you, you know, free yourself for a bit. And um, walking for twenty three kilometers as I did uh, two weeks ago, that's a lot. Great, that's that's, really that's great. fine yes. for me. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it is it is good it is a good thing to know. Mm -hmm. Take some fresh air. I just remind uh, this your experience reminded me of my first, uh, and I think it was the longest hike I have had. 25 kilometers in the mountains. I still remember, you know, the in aches Norway. in my, yeah, okay. my like pain in my you know muscles mm -hmm. in my legs, but it was amazing. Yeah. Did Did you enjoy the mountains? Yes, I did, but not the skiing part because it was closed due to the COVID. Okay, they reopened um, on Christmas, but I couldn't get there because I had my exams, etc. Mm -hmm. But I went hiking as well, and it was truly amazing. And I agree. The muscle pain afterwards. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's something to experience. Yeah, yeah. I, I totally worth it. I, I, yeah. I totally worth it because uh, not only for the muscle pain, of course, <laughs> but but for the fact that uh, you know after these hikes or some kind of you know jogging or something like that, there's always this kind of a mental clarity, right? Uh, you know, you you go inside, you you need to do that work, and it's like you're so focused, in my opinion, at least in my experience, right? Because you know. You have oxygen and blood in your brain at at at, yeah. at, at once, and not only just we sitting. We should have here. taken the pictures to show on the camera. You know, this was Marta hiking. This is Alexander. <laughs> yeah. This is Jonathan hiking. Well, we can do that actually. If if you if you sh if we send if we send the pictures, we can probably do that in this. But yeah, uh, yeah. I I just wanted to more generally say like, did you enjoy hiking just because or because of wanting to get out, or or was it you know somewhere in the middle in your opinion? Hmm. 
I think that in case of Norway, it is one thing a must to do because in a Norwegian culture, it's what they're doing on the weekends, uh, and they have these small wooden houses mm-hmm. you can go to during a longer hike and stay the night, and you don't usually have to, you know, um, schedule it before or you know pay beforehand. You can do it afterwards. Uh, if only there is a place I don't know on the floor to sleep in, uh, you you can just go in there even though there are other people, other groups of people. And um, as Bergen is located uh, in the center of uh, seven mountains, it's like a whole tradition for them. Mm. You know, what are we going to do? Or uh, or dating? Or dating? Like if you are, have a Tinder date, most probably it's going to be in the mountains. Mm. Climbing in the mountains. Interesting. Yeah. So you have Rome with seven hills and Bergen with seven mountains. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh. For a comparison. Yeah. yeah that's I didn't true. actually know that about Rome. Interesting. Are there some kind of other hobbies or, or activities that you have developed during the uh, pandemic specifically that have been have not been there before b- beforehand? No, for me it's definitely walking. Walking. Because, uh, yeah, you know, usually when you're going to the university, then you're going back home and then you go to the cafe, yeah. you always have those steps. And now while sitting online all the time, I'm not moving. I'm, I'm just like sitting at my desk and like, yeah, one meeting, another meeting, the third call, the fourth call. And then I just thought like, but actually I need those steps. I need mm-hmm. to go. So this is something I did also in Austria and here because otherwise... You are gaining those kilos. <laughs> yeah, kilos, really, yes. wow. Wondering, you mean. <laughs> what? Wondering. <laughs> I mean, it's good. I mean, <laughs> again, we're talking about a free mind, so that's that's good thing to, yeah. to do. I, I got reminded of a situation, actually quite a few situations, where, especially foreigners, I, I, I have experienced that they are not shy of the fact to turn on their cameras when they're on their way something during the meetings. True. Yeah. Uh, and we are quite shy. I don't know why Latvians tend to be scared of the fact, because there is one old, quite old man, I uh, I would like to say, both of them, uh, one was around 60, one was around 65, and they both, they were different, there were different kind of meetings, but both of them, they were like, yeah, I'm driving the car, I hope it's okay, but I, I have to go there uh, to this next, uh, you know, destination, and yeah, I, I'm listening to you, everything's fine, and uh, one was uh, walking, and you know, you can... S- you, you can hear the street noises and, and they're like yeah he's like mm, no, no worries I, I everything is fine yeah I will be there in five minutes uh, I, I will not speak right now because the noise is pretty loud but I mm-hmm. can hear you okay. and uh, it it might, makes me wonder um, why we have this you know scarcity it's scarcity well just shyness yeah just kind of shyness have you observed that in in, in Latvia as well it is not specific to Latvia, I can assure you. Okay. <laughs> I mean, you can say the same for, for Australians, but, you know, it's the screen gives you, like, a protection. It's like these kind of um, awful messages that you see on, you know, on Facebook, on social media, uh, you know, trying to insult people, trying to, you know, to discriminate them, mm-hmm. because they think that the screen is protecting them. And you can't trace back you can't trace them back uh, in their home, you know, to, to give them a good punch and to... Yeah. You know, you, you can't do that. And this kind of protection is, you know, reinforcing, you know, personal dynamics that you have on your mind. Yeah. If you're shy, you know, in, in real life, you might be even even more shy, even shyer on the, behind the screen, in your meaning. Mm-hmm. But how about you? Um, do you, did you or do you turn your cameras on uh, during the lectures? Well, I have a little secret. <laughs> <laughs> My computer has a camera, but the camera is integrated to the keyboard. Mm. So oh, basically, okay. if I turn the camera on, it would be <clears throat> first. I mean, it's good, it's a good thing you could see me, but you would see the, you know, the inside of my nose, <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> or my fingers if I type something down. So you know, mm-hmm. interesting. interesting. That's more practical. I didn't buy the computer this year for this, you know, for evading <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> putting yeah, yeah, the yeah. camera on. But that's my little secret. Mm. Yeah, I mean, I personally do have a camera on, usually. And that's what I was going to ask. But is it truly polite to have your camera on where you're just walking around and, you know, like, yeah, I'm driving. But is it is it polite, actually? Because you were asking, are we just shy? But for me, it's more like a question of respect, I believe, because... Mm-hmm. I understand that a person is speaking and talking like, you know, for instance, a lecturer and 
I do not want him or her to see me like while driving or something like mm -hmm. that because I will turn my camera on because I understand how it is when you are talking and nobody has a camera on, you know, it feels like you're talking to a wall because mm -hmm. you never know actually, is there a person? Maybe there is, nobody's there and it's just like somebody logged in and it's like, that's all. <laughs> yeah, well, people have to learn netiquette, you know, netiquette is... Um, it's like the etiquette for it. for net, yeah, yeah, of course, yeah. But for for online uh, online resources, mm -hmm. and uh, well, you could definitely go, you know, on top of bound it. As least as long as you have internet connection, and join a meeting and show the camera just to, you know, to relax a bit for the atmosphere in the in the meeting. But um, people have to have to learn how to use that. It's not it's not obvious. We've been we've been you know told with many years now. Uh, you know that the, the smartphone has to be used what well, can be used and has to be used everywhere in the metro maybe under the shower now but, you know, yeah there and, are and you have mobility yeah. that you have to you have to put aside for uh, for you know social interactions online that are made online yeah. this is something that needs to be worked with people i think that everyone is aware i think also the lecturers that uh, since you're home you have so many temptations to do something else uh, like um, anything, mm -hmm. talking, I don't know, with the, your mom or yeah. <laughs> playing with the dog or eating breakfast or having a snack or, I don't know, going to the toilet, I think like it's everything. Even, I think it's even harder because it's one click and you can be outside the lecture, right? Yeah. It's only one true. finger yeah. that you need to be distracted. Now. But for my friend, for instance, it's hard for her to truly concentrate on that online lecture if she's not cleaning her room. <laughs> So she always oh, cleans her room. Can you imagine all day long? Like, is all, that's, <laughs> not a, that's not a bad habit, I would that's say. That's not, that's not. But still, you know, if, if, yeah. if the camera would be on, that would look strange, you know, <laughs> cleaning the dust. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I understand. That's, but, but, you know, also, if we go back again to, to mental health, cleaning our, our rooms, I think it's very important, you know, especially if we uh, spend so much time. And, and, and I think, I hope that... Uh, at least I, th I can say from my experience that I have become a bit tidier, I, in my opinion, at least in the table kind of mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, area, because I understand that's, that area is really sacred now. We'll spend a lot of time there. And then, and, and, I don't know, how about you? For me, it's also truly important just to have like a clean space, because you know, yeah. like clean space, clean mind. Yeah. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. if everything is like truly overwhelmed, then I also feel overwhelmed. Like I have this temptation then to clean, you know, at least my table, just when, when it's a lot of books or I don't know, like some pencils or whatever, then I, mm -hmm. I cannot concentrate because I'm always thinking like, huh, oh, it's, it's not really clean. It's not, I don't have the space for my thoughts because yeah. I'm just looking at that and it I'm is. like, no, I can't, I can't concentrate. Mm. It's like a distraction, just even if you don't, uh, you know, use that. But it's like a, some kind of a distraction, even visual distraction, that yeah. can uh, have some kind of mental, you know, subconscious impact, I think. How about you? I'm used to, you know, to having a you know, covered desk. Um, yeah. Because of, well, I had in France a lot of documentations with me, so I had to, had to look at everything. But, you know, everything is organized. It's not like yeah. everything is... Uh, you know, everywhere on the on the de on the table, but um, if it were, yeah, <laughs> that would. I mean, well. honestly, honestly, I would really feel overwhelmed. Then I would really turn off the camera too. <laughs> I would be ashamed <laughs> and starting to clean. Everything. Well, it may be uh, actually a problem for some people. You know that uh, it definitely is. They perhaps also feel shy not only about themselves but about the environment they're in, and it's not that you can, you know be well represented and go outside and be, you know, in a beautiful library, for example, but, uh, you know, you need to show your, your ins in a sense, insights. No, but, but honestly, I think that's a huge problem as well, also for mental health for yeah. some people, because they just, you know, they feel insecure, for instance, about their room, or, I don't know, they're living with somebody in the same room, and they and just... Somebody's just, you know, going, for example. Yeah, yeah. They, they don't don't feel comfortable in, in, in a way to show, like, what is going on, actually. Even like, pets. Oh, that's also a distraction. Yeah, that's a huge distraction. Yeah. Yeah. I, don't, I don't know if you've seen the videos, you know, of uh, diplomats, of uh, officials with their, their cats trying to trying to mess up with them. <laughs> you, you can see you I, I, can see the disturbance on people's that. face. I will search that. Interesting. I, I know that. Um, oh, well, and this is something I, I would say I adore that. But my my friend's teacher, uh, she also occasionally, not she, but pre uh, precisely her cat, uh, you know, starts meowing and then, and, and, you know, it perhaps uh, sh shows itself in the frame, but uh, that's quite, 
that's quite tolerable and adorable in my opinion. But I know that uh, I just remembered there was this video clip a few years ago, you know, from BBC. In my opinion, that there was some kind of expert speaking about like um, uh, an expert speaking about like uh, some kind of topic. I don't remember mm -hmm. what. And uh, you know, and just a child, a child yes. uh, goes goes in, and then and, and, and the how second child, and then the yeah, mother. and then the yeah, mother. Yeah, yeah. Yes, and the problem is, you know, one. how to react in that situation. <laughs> You're in the spotlight in the BBC, right? And uh, I think this has really become even more relevant now. You know, but I think people have be become also more tolerant to that. That's true. That's true because so. they don't react like, oh my god, what's going on? It's yeah. fine. It's, it's funny. And this may bring you know some humanity through to meetings, yeah. to official meetings, yes. like serious meetings. Definitely. Yeah. That you know, the person you're talking to is not only like your adversary negotiator is also a human. That's yeah. I, I remember. I just remember this another incident. <laughs> there was this um, U U.S. Uh, one attorney, right? The, I think that it's popular. You can search that, right? Where, where his, uh, his in Zoom in my yeah, opinion, it was Zoom. Uh, his face changed to, to a, a face cat. of a cat. Right. Yes. As it you, was a filter. Yeah. yeah did you, do and you he know more? Yes, and, and he couldn't turn it off. Yeah. And he was like, "I'm yeah. not a cat." <laughs> because pre uh, like the, the previously it was used by his daughter or some oh. uh, some other relative, and she was making fun with the, with her friends using Snapchat filters, and he didn't know how to take it off. <laughs> And that is that humanity in in some in some case, right? But it's crazy. Now he's known all over the world, just like as in, you know, is. like a cat attorney. You know, <laughs> cat attorney. Yeah. It's 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 actually a, a sort of way nowadays to become famous, because you know, it's very logical that some sort of things like this appear. And the funniest part about this cat video was that. Um, there was one place where it was written that such um, like this, this uh, meeting cannot be streamed or recorded or shown anywhere, but someone of the group did oh. did show it. Oh, and that's who was actually, that? That's also Jesus. a violation. That because it was indeed. a courtroom or something yeah, like that. Is, there is and that, yeah, and, <laughs> but I think that the part only with the you know the cat part it was just you but know the, cut off. You know, the, an argument might be uh, you know given that well. Being a cat is not a part of the court, right? You can <laughs> record that. It's not uh, within it the was procedures. A filter. Of course, it's a it filter. It was an but, intro, you know. It's you know? Just an argument. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, it's like um, what I wanted to to ask more is about your your habits. I think that would be really also important. You know, in this being in this environment and having some kind of having some kind of habits is really important as well as some organization, right? And then, then uh, yeah, perhaps have there been new habits, not new hobbies, as we you know said, but but new habits like daily routines or or some kind of tips and tricks that you have understood, uh, perhaps some self, how to say that, like self understanding more of of of, of how how you work and and what works for you, and so have there been some kind of these things? Yeah, actually, I've been walking much more I understand that at some point I get so overwhelmed or so exhausted in a smaller time frame than before or just tired of the walls of my room mm -hmm. and I it, switch it locations yeah. I switch locations within my house uh, for the next meeting then huh. or if I have free time I go for a walk mm. Um, and uh, actually, I understood that I have to talk with people more about my feelings. Um, that, um, you know, I have to admit to you that I feel bad today. I can't deal with my emotions today, for example. Mm -hmm. And then I just, I just feel more freely to speak about them because I understand that others may probably feel the same way. We all share that sentiment. <laughs> because the farthest you can go is to Rimi or Maxima to buy food. And that's the large, largest, you know, communication for you for that day with the, I don't know, with the other with the customers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. And it's it's exhausting at some point. <laughs> yeah, if, if, if somebody lives, for example, uh, I, I live with uh, parents, well, you know, both my and my girlfriends and in and, and, in many situations, I am even not the one who who buys the produce, right? So I am even I don't have any kind of 
uh, motivation or outside kind of force that pushes me to go outside and it really is only me in the end that mm -hmm. needs to you know put that boots on and put that put those uh, put that jacket on and just go for a walk and or some kind of a run, running but yeah you know that takes a lot of motivation and I'm yeah, still exactly. searching because because your your mind thinks that you have nothing to do outside yeah yeah you, you know. had well you, you had this uh, this feeling before before COVID and restrictions there was there was a you know life outside people trying to you know to regroup and to commute commute even. yeah exa yeah. exactly this kind of simple things and you know now it's like point A to point B it's really I have to and I'm forced to buy food because I have to buy food so you just you're just going to to the supermarket to the Remy or Maxima and going back and that's it and you don't feel you don't feel like you're needing anything mm -hmm. that's I, your outside experience of the day and actually I have noticed that it's hard for everyone you have to be more patient also with the you know the staff of the market because they tend to get overwhelmed with you know because in what way I mean I I had this one situation that my brother experienced he went to caffeine mm -hmm. with his friends uh, and uh, they did not pa put the mask on before entering the store, but afterwards. Mm -hmm. And the, uh, how is, is the seller? Uh, the, the barista. The barista, yeah, yeah. The barista was very angry. She was mad. She was basically, what the hell are you doing? You know, put the mask on. Of course, I understand the mm -hmm. whole thing, but you can say it more politely. I think that my brother did the right thing. He said, yes, I'm sorry, but... It's okay. You don't have to shout, you know. And and then she then she started to talk with him like calmly, and he, she said, "Oh my God, I had a, such like mad day. It was so hard. I, like I had to work for I don't know seven hours, and then I got exhausted because people tend to you know not listen to then do the everything as mm -hmm. in the restrictions mm -hmm. and la la." And then I understood, like, yeah, like, we are all in this together, and we have to you know feel the way that you know we are here for each other. It's one. Uh, you know, one thing that you just put on a mask and go into a supermarket, but it's another that you all the time need to control if everything is in compliance, if everybody is wearing the mask. Yeah, it's it's another like kind of a thing that you need to think about in work, and, and you know you don't get paid more for that, right? So, yeah. in the very beginning, or at least three four months ago, there was this movement of people who were so against you wearing the masks. Mm -hmm. And uh, they are still there, and um, I'm just uh, wondering, like, how it is for you know these people working in the customer service to deal with them on everyday basis. Because I think yeah. that every day they tend to have two or three of those kind of people, uh, and and they have uh, gone to the extent that they are even having these papers. They have read su such like theories on the internet that they can write a paper and show like I'm against the masks, I'm not gonna wear it or something. Like there, there are there there are ridiculous like stuff on the internet that they're doing, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, especially you know not right not not here but in other like you know countries and then they got inspired by these uh, stuff. You know, especially for some people. And it's completely understandable that there is some certain resilience to change, and and and, and some people, especially during like stressful times or some sometimes that there is a lot of uncertainty, there people just manifest themselves in very interesting and strange ways. This is, I think, a, an interesting time to be a human, you know, <laughs> understanding really uh, something new about ourselves, how we function, and 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 uh, what do we like and what we don't like, and but yeah. Have there been interesting observations uh, in Austria about how people, you know, deal with uh, COVID uh, more sp specifically, like nation, in national level, or or perhaps in your experience, just with people? I would say Austrians are more likely to comply to laws. Mm -hmm. So, respectively, they truly, if you have to wear a mask, they will wear a mask. Of course, they also had some kind of protest, but that was. Um, against the vaccine because mm -hmm. the same story it's uh, you know the belief that it's uh, obligatory so they are going outside in the streets um, but apart from that everything was truly regulated even at the university while we were still uh, on site 
we had to disinfect every table when we uh, where we want to yourselves sit. yes oh. it, it is it is a, it was being done by the person like like the staff of the mm -hmm. university mm -hmm. before the lecture and even afterwards you're coming in there was this like a huge box with those wipes and you had to take one you had to also like disinfect the table you were willing to see that and afterwards you also had to go to that box take another one disinfect and then only right. leave and also yell yeah, always a mask Mm -hmm. So it was really interesting that to experience this because they're actually truly willing to clean those tables, even if it you know somebody could think like, but it already was clean. Like you you saw this uh, for instance cleaning lady just came out of the auditorium, but you're still going in and you're like, but I, I will clean it myself as well. Yeah, well, it's a habit probably that you need to you know it's like pedagogy as as we yeah, sometimes. Yeah, maybe say. Austrian had already had to have it before before COVID. Well, that would be strange. I think not really, because because they were always like mentioning this in a way like it, it was not normal, you know. You have to do this. Don't forget to do that. Mm. So I believe okay. it's I not see. something new. Mm. Yeah. In okay. France, yeah. You know, in France we have a this culture of um, not revolution has. <laughs> oh like, yeah. Yes. France. <laughs> and, 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 yeah. Yeah. No, we're not revolutionary people, but you know, revolted. You know, very often. Uh, to say the least, but um, yeah, it was really difficult for for people to you know to to integrate the new rules because they didn't they didn't believe the government at first with COVID, and there was so much to to criticize the government on like the mask. We didn't have any masks in the beginning. Uh, we didn't we didn't have tests. You know, test samples. We we couldn't. We you know we were trapped, and uh, it was. Maybe natural for people. I, I can understand. I can understand you know, the type of reaction to blame, trying to blame because it, it you know it relieves you personally. Yeah. And say okay, it's not my fault if I don't have a face mask. It's his fault. Like say the name, insert name, uh, and it's it was really interesting to to look at because uh, people couldn't do anything. You, you know, you could complain, but you couldn't go out in the streets. You couldn't just protest uh, in groups you couldn't do anything you just uh, post some messages on, on Facebook uh, as I was saying and this may well this was certainly an experience for, for French people you know to have this uh, you know either you you had two options actually either you would comply with the rules like okay I'm complying because I, I know there's an authority mm -hmm. and some have realized that you know there's uh, there's not only myself, there's not only the mayor, there's also uh, the prefect, there's also um, the local you know the representatives. You have the government, not only the government, but like you, you would discover lots of things you know the sanitary uh, authorities as well, yeah. uh, which uh, would um, actually uh, save the rules instead of uh, uh, the government. Like you know the high authority of uh, of health would uh, have daily. Uh, daily reports and press conferences and say, okay, so this is what we need to do now. And this is for the common good. And um, it was difficult to, you know, for us to adapt. And especially here in Latvia, you have the same story, actually, because uh, you were mentioning this uh, this protest. Uh, I've been, I've been in process, N not, you know, I was trying not to, not to meddle with uh, Latvian politics, but I went, I went to see it. And uh, this was the same the same process. Try, people trying to to blame, trying to uh, trying to find any any excuse, like theories, actually theories, conspiracy theories, are like an excuse for them. Okay, so uh, they're trying to uh, you know uh, you had this these signs like no my needs uh, f with the, the the faces of uh, of uh, governments, uh, government yes. representatives, and you know this is his fault. This is her fault. Mm -hmm. And this relieves people. At the same time, you want to comply. So okay, so you can just protest and say whatever you want, as long as you apply the rules, you know, at home or, you know, it's it's like a compromise. You ex governments tend to accept more criticism from people as long as they listen at least to what they're saying to them. Mm -hmm. This is yeah, this is really complicated to to look at. I think this is something also similar, you know, anything can be, you know, somehow drawn in the end back to psychology. And, and in a situation, I see that um, uh, 
it's completely understandable why people try to blame somebody else. And, and you know, COVID is something that just, it's like f force majeure, as we, as we would say in this school, right? But uh, it's something that you could, couldn't predict, predict, but it had mm -hmm. such a lot of impact. And, and it's like, uh, like a phenomenon, just like a force of nature, even we would say, and 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 there is no under. Of course, there is explanation why it happened, but still, it's something that just happens, and it's like re reality. You just find yourself in, and and the problem is that people don't want to accept that reality, and 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 people who try to deal with that reality are. At, at first, you know, criticized for it because, uh, you know, we, we somehow don't want to uh, ex, ex, uh, accept that. But as I have experienced, in my opinion, there has been some changes in the sentiment towards the COVID pandemic and the restrictions. And also, you know, online meetings and online learning, perhaps. Have there been some observations of this around you, you know, that people somehow differently look at that? Because from my per perspective, you know, I think even naturally, I was, I was, I was more afraid of of of, of COVID in a sense uh, in 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 the spring, right, uh, last spring, when it was something really new and really yeah. sensational in the media. But uh, but now people out, you know, around have I think accepted perhaps more. Again, you know, going back to that, this uh, this under this fact that COVID is a part of life now, and we need to you know deal somehow with it. So yeah, perhaps some some other observations from your side. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Um, you know, we're used to events like short events, like a, an explosion in Beirut and Lebanon, like something that would happen very shortly and then with all. immediate effects, or at least you would have uh, you could predict the effects for uh, for the following you know, the following weeks. You know, talking about Lebanon, uh, okay, the the port just exploded. There will be uh, a food uh, a food shortage uh, because they they can't import things. You you can just predict and can you can have the horizon even if it's dark. At the, I really think that beginning uh, people were really believing at least that this uh, this uh, pandemic was short. I mean, it was brutal, but it would be short. Uh, we would be applying very strict, maybe the most you know the harshest the harshest um, restrictions like ever ever taken since uh, since the end of the Cold War. Uh, since uh, you know the Second World War in, in in Western Europe, there was, I think, a common belief that um, okay, we we are sacrificing now. Mm -hmm. It's going to be better afterwards, and you know, obviously, it doesn't work like that with uh, with uh, pandemics. And people have came have come to realize that this this cannot be done really, really swiftly. You can't just um, have a lockdown for for four months. Having zero cases in your country and have you know a normal life afterwards, yeah. you can't get rid of this. So people are trying to, you know, to adapt the thing to integrate the the observation that it, it doesn't work, and you have to you have to hold yourself, you know, for a long period of time. I don't know how how people do that though. So how it how it processes in the mind. So so the fair point is that. Uh, you cannot predict when it will be e ending. And it's like, okay, another month, let's do that. Okay, probably this spring and then everything is over. But then it continues, right? And, yeah. and I think this is like, uh, creates this kind of a temper tantrum inside us, right? That, the the oh, variants, I mean, we okay. wouldn't, I mean, obviously, uh, virologists would, uh, would have predicted that we, there would be variants uh, to the COVID-19. Yeah. COVID but we just didn't see it. We we can we can just predict the fact that it could be even worse than, than mm -hmm. what, it, what it was. Uh, and just take a look at uh, Great Britain right now. Uh, they, they they chose in the summer to have a you know third lockdown, fourth lockdown. Yeah, I don't know. probably. And they were really thinking, okay, we have this uh, this variant. We're gonna we get get rid of it. It's our variant. We're gonna get rid of it, and it's gonna be better afterwards. It didn't get better. I mean, obviously a bit more, but. Not enough for uh, for the the pandemic to to slow down. Mm -hmm. So we really see this um, these attempts to just to to wipe it off wipe it off your mind. It's something natural, I think. If you're overwhelmed with uh, with a problem, you just want to you just want to forget it. But the reality just um, imposes it on your mind consistently, constantly. I mean. 
I completely agree. I wanted to perhaps steer the conversation now to a more positive note, you know, because it's completely natural that we all see all the you know negative side and aspects to 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 the COVID pandemic and restrictions and and learning under COVID and you know it's hard to motivate yourself and it's really ne- we really need to go outside. But perhaps is there something that you have? you are proud of uh, in yourself because of that COVID pandemic. I see that there you have something to say, probably. <laughs> yes, that's a, that's a huge change in my life. I started to sleep for eight hours. I used that's to be great. the person who sleeps for two to four hours daily. Oh, my God. It, it was a crazy time, definitely it was. But now I really understand the importance of sleep. Mm-hmm. And I truly understand it. It's, it's really important to manage. Anyways, if you believe that you are, you know, I will do that at night. No, you won't. You will be too tired. Don't even try. <laughs> Just yeah. go to sleep. Yeah. And, and that's why I actually realized because in the morning, I'm personally more productive. Mm-hmm. And why should I torture myself by trying to do something at 2 a.m.? Yeah. You're you know, probably, you're, our, our productivity at that moment probably is like one third or one, or, or yeah, one third or it's, one it's half really only. You yeah, know? yeah. So for me, it's definitely getting a normal amount of sleep. And I'm truly proud of that. Mm-hmm. And I'm, yeah. Yeah, that's yeah I think my, my <laughs> sleep as well is better, you know, but uh, I know from experience at least that if you have some kind of work, especially if your work is like next to your bed, uh, it's hard to go to sleep if you don't feel uh, that you have done enough and that you will be able to manage everything tomorrow, right? So, so there is this kind of a rushing in the mind that is happening. But yeah, how about you, Jonathan, actually? How, how about you? Of? Mm, good question. Or something that you would just like to take uh, after the COVID pandemic and implement in your life? No, I think, I mean, you, you, you don't know that, but uh, before coming to Latvia, I had a very tough year in France. Like, mm-hmm. a, I wouldn't go into details, but it was really hard on my, on my mind and on everything, and everyone that was around me. And I, I happened now to, to value time, not as, you know, as a scarce resource. Because before, you know, when you had to drive, when you had to commute, you know, you have this rhythm and, you know, it, it goes on and you don't just consider time as it is. You just consider time as uh, seconds that are, you know, leaping away. Now, I may have calmed myself. This would be the, my achievement because, yeah, I, I just come to a more philosophical you know, approach to things like That's great. you have the time. Come on, That's come down. Great. You have, uh, you know, you can you can do things right. You know, you can, and you, you can just focus on everything and just sit on the desk because you know, basically sitting on the desk on the desk right now, and just uh, come to re- realize everything you have done before everything you have to, to do. You have to do list. You know, you can just organize everything, and everything seems you know back under control, like. You can predict yourself because you currently with the current pandemic, the the problem is that you can't have a horizon right now. You just you can't. You don't know what's going to happen in the next months. Uh, I don't know what I'm going to do in the summer because you know the pandemic. But mm-hmm. it makes you work on yourself, makes you work on um, how you want to approach things because you don't have a solution, but you want to you know to at least soften up the uh, the you know the answer that. It would be given to you. So, yeah. If I may just add, I believe it's also about the appreciation that now we are, we are really appreciating things all around. Yeah, like now, true. springtime, it's finally getting warm, yeah. and, and and it's sun outside. You know, it's sunny, and it's and that it's getting better. Really and you and you're mm-hmm. always noticing those things because before it was like. Okay, it's spring. I anyways have yeah. to run from the university to the another place to the another meeting. I don't have time for that. Definitely. And now you're like, but actually, it's spring outside, or it was winter and it was snowy, and you know, and it's like I can enjoy it. Mm-hmm. I can go for a walk. I, I I can take some pictures of nature because yeah. why not? I have time, as you have said. I have time to do that. Mm-hmm. It's not like I'm in a rush, in a constant rush as it was before, always going somewhere, driving. Yeah. Or, so now it's like more about the appreciation of things. And I think it's wonderful. And it's, being it's really more beautiful. in control. And yes, being, also. as you said, I think also, Jonathan, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, like this feeling of being in control and, and 
and being of course it may be you know exhausting at at some points probably that you need to be the parent of yourself all the time but but at, if 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 we do that you know somehow efficiently that mm-hmm. would be really good and being in that moment more probably yeah i like that optimistic note how about you mark I truly you've been very very thought you know thinking <laughs> in, in the last minutes i i'm just observing and listening i I personally believe with everything you have already said because I noticed that in my own life. Actually, um, I also have uh, managed to, to take more control of my body and my thoughts because emotionally and psychologically it's exhausting to um, to have such obstacles that we are, you know, entering and living in right now. And. Uh, in some at some point you realize okay i feel this way but how i can make myself feel better and then you try to make yourself feel better then you start to uh, ask i don't know you start to go to your uh, brother's room and you're like hey i want to do something let's play a game or I'm let's bored. go outside <laughs> because That's nice yeah. yeah that is really nice actually relationships you know yes, yeah relationships. definitely I, I i totally appreciate uh, you know people around me more mm-hmm. because um, you know you're living like even with the especially i think with the family members if you're living in one location and they are not going you know to their work every day you are not going to the school every day you're in one house and it actually can be very challenging for your relationship also and at some point you understand uh huh it's easier to um, have an argument and it's easier uh, to also have a better bond and relationship building because yeah. you don't have to wake up at six o'clock. You can wake up, you know, I don't know, 30 minutes before the meeting and you have more time for other things that are surrounded by uh, you, you know. Mm-hmm. And that's that's a great thing. Uh, I think that with my brother, I have built a stronger relationship right now. I just okay. Jonathan, yeah. h- how about you, you know? being this, uh, abroad and, and, and how how is family bonding during this time for you? I'm even more separated right now because um, the only family I ha- I've got right now is my mother mm-hmm. and she went back to the Philippines so technically mm-hmm. we have 10,000 kilometers between us. Wow. Between oh. us. Uh, it's uh, And apart from that I have friends, of course I have friends uh, <laughs> <laughs> really, uh, in France and uh, <laughs> this is a pretty special time because in any case being here in Latvia would yeah. mean I have to to communicate, uh, you know, with phone, with uh, WhatsApp, mm-hmm. with, uh, with Discord. Uh, it, you know, when it's really interesting right now to to transit into adulthood. I think. Yeah, it I is. Mean, we're we're from eighteen to twenty four, uh, being students and try to to get a hold on life, and you have this, um, you know, before you had these these mainstreams like okay. Uh, have your friends, like something you put aside. But have your friends. But like um, they'll be here if um, if they if they need to. If you need some consolation, like they like support. And you like, okay, get a car, get a job, attend your classes. Like really strict things. Mm. And now, because you have time for um, for focusing on relationships, you can just put your friends and families, family members, in the center of everything. Yeah, you can choose to do that, or you can choose not to, but you shouldn't. Uh, and it makes it gives you time to work on relationships. Mm-hmm. Really, would it be with friends, would it be with uh, with my mother in in the Philippines? You know, you have the time to build something, mm-hmm. and, I th- and you don't have any pressure because you don't have this uh, this type of uh, social rule trying to trying to put the you know, friends as cons- consoling persons. Like, yeah. if you need. They will be friends. You know, you can just put these people in the center and have your work uh, aside. It makes you focus on what's important in life, actually. Mm -hmm. Because work is not, like, work is not life. Work makes life. You know, it's not... It's only part of it. Yeah, it is. That is. And it definitely helps, you know, to fill the time, the free time, because I think during these times it's very easy to get lonely within yourself. You know, you're in a state of 
yeah, sitting in the room, you know, not doing anything, looking, you know, at the walls or oh, I will watch a movie and not do anything even though I have a bunch of stuff to do. But it's like self-motivation. It's very, you know, this is like a huge task mm -hmm. for self-motivation. Stay, you yeah. know, in shape. What I thought about is that you know, sometimes in, in relationships, and at, at this moment, this is very positive, COVID is very positive perhaps for our family relationships in, in, in many situations, but uh, it may be perhaps a bit of a bigger strain on our friendships because you don't have this thing that you go to school, you know, and you just meet them and you, you can predict and rely that they will be there, right, and that you will have a conversation. So also from that perspective, you need to have this kind of proactive approach to friendships. And in my opinion, the COVID pandemic has been very good on showing who are the real friends here, you know, mm. who really but I want believe to that's a problem in a really? way that, you know, uh, in a way that we see that, hey, and now he's my real friend because uh, he oh, was talking yeah. to me during the pandemic. I understand, but, yeah. But maybe that another person actually had busy. some kind of yeah, yeah, busy example. or mental health problems or whatever. But we are considering like, oh, he didn't talk to me, you know, um, most probably he has another friend and he's not interested mm -hmm. in what I'm up to. But well, it's not the case. The person mm -hmm. may be interested and truly willing to have this conversation, but yeah. it's hard for him or her at the same period of time. And this is also, you, you mentioned about the self-motivation, and I believe that's also another problem of the COVID, that nowadays you can see that, oh, I have to be motivated, I have to do a lot of things. But you're staying at home, you can wake up at 6 a.m., you can make that <laughs> coffee, that lovely True. Instagram type <laughs> breakfast and then take Who a shower. Who right? yes, and, and you know, and like <laughs> study for eight hours, work for 12 yeah. hours, and you know, and like, and also get eight hours of sleep. So, you know, it, it feels like sometimes, especially when you look at the social media, they are trying to say to you, a lot of people right now, that, hey, you have time, but that that's not the case. It's, I believe that we also have to have this time for ourselves to watch a movie, even if I have to do yeah. a lot of things, but I have yeah, to have this time for myself. Yeah, self -care. I do not have to be always True. productive and motivated yeah. in a way just because we are destroying that is, ourselves. That is a very good point, in my opinion, that we haven't touched upon that, that much, you know? Just, you know, sometimes just, you know, having this laissez-faire, as we say, <laughs> laissez-faire, we, 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 sorry, uh, I, was, I was just, I was just thought, uh, you know, this practicing kind of, French? Uh, you know, just <laughs> practicing my French, you know, I don't have that many. I'm actually. giving you a grade. <laughs> 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 Thanks. What I wanted to uh, just say, yeah, this, you know, this kind of a more free approach. I yeah. really need. I think this is also something that goes beyond the pandemic, right? Just, just understanding that you need that time for yourself, yeah. and, definitely, and and being really mindful about it. I think it's really important because, as I believe, you cannot escape this. Uh, how to say? You cannot escape leisure. You cannot escape. Uh, uh, relax a relaxing mm -hmm. time because it will uh, one, in one way or another manifest itself will you just wake up uh, understanding that you are uh, like doom scrolling on on some kind of social media platform or you are completely overwhelmed and are breaking down or you will probably be more mindful and probably take a walk as we have uh, done here and, and understand that this is something that we have in common right and this will help for the future I mean if you have a very if you're going to have a very busy life, you know, with work, with responsibilities, you can have, uh, you can be a policymaker at the EU, you can, you know, you can have lots of, lots of, um, of options when you wouldn't have time for yourself. And this pandemic would teach us, you know, the, you know, the, the essentials, the, the basics on, okay, you only have 15 minutes. You don't have to consider that you have 15 minutes. You can take your time. And you have the approach, you have the, the methodology for, for just focusing on what you're doing. This would certainly help us for, for the future. Because yeah. at some point we will need to, you know, to, to get back to work and to, uh, to get back to a normal life. And if you don't learn from what, you, what the uh, COVID experience you know, is giving us, basically you would just be, you, you, won't, you won't improve. And you have a chance to improve on your, on your perception of things. Would it be on yourself or uh, with people? You have a, a perception work to do on yourself, a psycho psychology, mm -hmm. really. Mm -hmm. I agree. Don't you no think word. people were more frustrated before? You know, you have to wake up early in the morning to get 
get to get ready then to get to the work to the university and you're always in this rush mm -hmm. and now people at least i find them like calmer of course it's it's hard not to meet friends in real life and to communicate but on the other side somehow it feels like people are not so frustrated as they were before personally i can i can sh i share this sentiment as well i would say probably the covid pandemic is just another unexpected way of living which comes with its mental strain because of that uncertainty I just, uh, I'm just thinking about the fact that I personally miss the aspect that I have to get ready and, you, you know, getting a visual appearance of yeah. myself that I would usually go outside, you know, because now it's like, should I, you know, get fancy, ready to go to, to buy groceries? Um, mm, not really. Uh, I can go in my leggings, you know, or jogging pants, or uh, I don't care. And then, uh, then comes this question, what this COVID pandemic has given us as a benefit to look deeper into ourselves and, and understand things better about ourselves? You know, like they could take a pause and now look at your life previously, what you had and what you may want to bring to the future to, I don't know, improve your life since this is a time of you know, like an experiment which actually has a very high cost as people are dying and, and getting ill mm -hmm. and stuff like that but um, it definitely has its uh, lessons life lessons too yeah, can you picture this this person I mean it could be your parents you know, this person who gets out of the house uh, with a really closed face like the person is already thinking on the work okay so this is this is yeah. um, uh, you have obligations, I have to talk about that, I have to prepare, yeah. I have to call. And you're not even at work on, on the premises that you're already, you know, in the mindset, yeah. uh, in the working mindset. I think for people who would have understood what the COVID pandemic would have, uh, would have brought to them, uh, you would have your chance to, to have, a, you know, like, to be more lightheaded about things, about responsibilities, about pressure. You, but you will be able to, to cope with pressure, like, in a different manner, not like in a better way or worse way, but at least but with a different manner, like yeah. lightheaded. You, you can, you know, if you're gonna make it or not, if you're gonna have a good day or a bad day. Not counting the events, but um, if you have, uh, uh, I don't know, an example. Uh, say you have a press conference to to hold. Mm -hmm. You have to speak in front of in front of people. Before COVID, uh, the person who would, would speak would already be thinking about the formulas, like uh, how do I say things, which sentence do I have to, to use, uh, how do I put it, it's like you're really on a, on a very socialized pressure uh, for this and after COVID this person would be, okay, I know what I have to say, I will just draft it before and the least I have in terms of uh, pressure, the better mm -hmm. because I would say things, you know, this kind of thing, uh, trying to work on yourself and trying to uh, to look as if you were another person, but like uh, to have an insight on you. This would be good. You actually enlightened me about one fact. While you were talking, I imagined this whole scenario in my head, and I realized that the one of the largest challenges of the COVID situation is that we have differentiated, like put in the boxes, like this is how we look at the work environment, this is how we are looking in, I don't know, at school, or this is how we are seen by friends, and this is how we look at home. And now, all of these, you know, images, they are put in one place, home. And your work, your friends, your daily, everything is coming to your home. And I think that is the largest challenge, because how to divide them now? Because that is the challenge why the relationships, uh, you know, with the, by but couples are breaking up right now because they are like they are experiencing larger difficulties. I think that there was the statistics about the marriages. Yeah, it may, uh, it may have a like strain. That. It may have a really big strain. Um, yeah. Of course, some of them are getting stronger, uh, and some of them are just you know breaking up. And then comes the situations that you know parents have to deal with their like smaller children, you know, because they are studying right now. I don't. I can't imagine how it would be like mm -hmm. a seven-year-old having you know. A class of uh, maths and you know especially in the first grade you know if, if you're in the first mm -hmm. grade and you're just it's your first school experience yeah. being uh, being distant but should we have kind, kind of different images 
is it something that we should really strive for? But uh, I think that's it comes one, naturally. Yeah. Previously, I didn't even notice that something like that happens to me, and then when when I'm you know, being stopped, you know, like on a pause, you see, I would be different in communication with these people, or I would I would have a tendency to. Um, use even in a different tone of my voice. Imagine you talking with a lecturer. Most probably you're not going to talk with your friends this, in the same manner because there is a larger a level of respect to that people. Of course, you're respecting your friends, mm -hmm. but you're like more freely, you're more, you know... Yeah, yeah I understand, yeah. Having fun, yeah. you know. And um, I think that also leaves an impact on us. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I'm, I meant like in that way. Uh, and and what, what, what also came in my mind is the really important thing to divide your kind of functions in, in your house, right? It's not that... Well, of course, in many situations, it's completely understandable that many of them can overlap. For example, you can sit in your kitchen or you sit, uh, and, and have a lecture or you can sit in your couch where, because you don't have any other choice, perhaps. Mm -hmm. In a mental way, if not physically, it's really important to divide this kind of also, you know, workspace from your chill space and uh, yeah, it's the same from sports with, space. Uh, the fact that you cannot study and work uh, in your bed because your brain just get used to that. In that place you're working, you're studying, you're doing yeah. things, and it's hard for those people to fall asleep. So that's another problem, you know, so mm -hmm. you just have to be not in the bad, at least. <laughs> before, before, even before COVID, we had, uh, you know, the, the development of, um, how to put it, working saloons. Yeah, work, like these shared workspaces or yeah, something like workspaces. that. Yeah, workspaces. Uh, when you have couches, you can put just the, your laptop on, on your knees and you can work and try and relax with, with mm -hmm. things. And the reason this was, you know, developing before COVID was uh, was that people were were not, um, you know, were not productive, were not succeeding in bringing work to the home, especially like yeah. self-employed, you yeah. know. Mm -hmm. kind of, yeah, and maybe people. there's something, that is something that would suddenly develop after COVID, uh, mm -hmm. because people would try to, okay, I've been invaded by. By COVID, I've been invaded by many things in my, in my home. I felt I felt um, um, oppressed by you know by many things sorry, psychologically, and you want to you want to externalize everything that's harming you. Mm -hmm. So maybe there's going to be some work with that. Um, we're already talking about. I know it's not for uh, uh, for this type of um, of reason, but for school for Kenyan Gardens, uh, they're talking of um, of outside uh, classes. And maybe this may generalize after COVID without sanitary reasons. I think that, you know, previously we talked with Jonathan a few days ago. Indeed. And uh, he raised a very important aspect that uh, psychological support is very good point where to give the basis mm -hmm. that, you know, there is a place you can go to. And uh, in case of students, I think that is great if university can, uh, you know, give it to you. Yeah. As I understand, uh, Jonathan, you had some kind of this support sessions in Saturdays in, as an Erasmus student, right? Or, or am I mistaken? Oh, yeah. With uh, the Erasmus coordinator. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We had a uh, proposal, like, it was uh, Ola. So she just... Uh, she was asking us basically, okay, so I'll be available for a Zoom meeting for just thirty minutes to just check on you. Uh, do you want to join? That's that's the that's the most basic thing really, and uh, this proactive, you know, aspect is uh, is important. Mm -hmm. I also think uh, we should uh, we should have some games. Like, True. Yeah. yeah. Game night. Yes. Because <laughs> downstairs, downstairs, we have this uh, this mini football table, yes. and yeah. yeah, it was it was a good time, right? Yeah, it was. Uh, definitely. And maybe something like we may not have everyone may not have uh, video games, of course, but like mini games uh, online, something like there are uh, some there are really good alternatives, yeah, you know, to like for example future. Arabic telephones, like games. Uh, you can have some good laughs and cahoots, uh, perhaps. Cahoots? We had yes. cahoots, right? <laughs> we had that. Uh, that was a good experience. Who doesn't love cahoots? But how about you? What would you like to see more in the COVID pandemic? Or done in the past, uh, from school's perspective, or some some other perspective, perhaps. It, it is quite an interesting point in a way that I believe that everything depends on our perception, as you have mentioned before, and uh, I believe it depends on the person itself. 
uh, it's not like somebody has to offer us something. It's more, how do we actually see things? You know, some people say that I went on Erasmus in a bad time. You know, that was a bad decision. Mm. It was not. And I truly believe it was not because I truly used it uh, as much as I could. And I'm grateful for that experience. And uh, I truly enjoyed it. Like, as, as much as I could, as I have said before. And here, yeah, I would also agree that it's truly important to communicate, to have this ability. Otherwise, a possibility. Otherwise, we're just like, you know, on this laptop, on a Zoom meeting, because we have this lecture, I see some cameras on, and that's all. Mm -hmm. and, and, and I never talk. I mean, I can talk to a lecturer in a way just to ask a question or just to have some point of view or whatever, but... I do not talk to a person like a, in my class. Like we never talked before, <laughs> although we are taking the same course. True. So you know, it feels truly different. It like, is yeah. something not normal, you know, because usually I would have to talk to any person in the classroom, and now it's like, but how would you actually do that? In a way, should I like type in a chat like, hey, do you want to have a conversation or whatever? Maybe group we can work, perhaps group works like you know more yes, group. Yes, definitely. Works. But, but, but still, people you know. use the, uh, use people choose the same people always for a group work yeah. at the university. If That's you true. have the choice, right? But but uh, actually, uh, there the is this there is this balance also, you know, be between like trying to meet new people and and forcing some groups and and also having this choice for students to excel, you know. And yeah, I understand. So that's what I would love to, yeah. It, it of course, it of course, you know, there will be always a lack of uh, social interactions with COVID times. Yes, but definitely. Erasmus experiences in COVID times, you know, reverse, uh, reverse, you know, frustrations into, into more beneficial perspective. Like you wouldn't, if everything were open, was open, you know, if there was no restriction. Uh, um, basically, you would have thought, okay. Uh, I've only been in Austria, for example, for six months. Oh, I should, I should have done that. Oh, yes. I should have, I should have. Um, I didn't see everything. I didn't mm -hmm. see any mm -hmm. every museum. I should have done. You know, you'll be frustrated. And now, you would think, okay, this was very difficult. I've done everything I could. And this reverses everything. And this maybe would be uh, a you know a lesson for for afterwards. And this also connects to this rush we had before. We have to do everything. Yeah. We have to manage to do that and that. And yeah. to go there, to visit all of the museums in the city, in the country, or anywhere. But now it's more like you realize that you have time, as you have said. I can go to Austria whenever COVID ends. And, uh, and mm -hmm. I, I can see that museum. I can visit that mountain. I can go skiing, finally, because it's open, you know. And you don't you don't have this rush that now in those six months or even in a week when yeah. you were going for a vacation, oh, I have to manage yeah. to see everything, to like every smallest thing because it's said that you have to see this in Florence, so, so I have to do this. So Erasmus has a free trial to the to the <laughs> full experience, right? Yeah. Theoretically. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> we yeah, no, our coordinators promised us help for uh, for COVID times. You know, you would may not be able to go to your country. Uh, and you will have a bad time. But at the end, you know, you're trying to look at things in, in a different way. Mm -hmm. It's better that way, I think. So let's probably encourage students to apply for Erasmus, even, uh, even if there will be COVID restrictions, you know, in autumn. And, and, and really, let's take a look on ourselves and, and try to understand what has been probably the, also the good aspects, you know, of, of COVID pandemic and Perhaps there is some kind of a buddy, some kind of a friend or a family member that we should reach out and say, hey, perhaps there is some kind of ways we can help, you know, d during these times. And But still, I think this was a very amazing and truly insightful conversation because we are really, uh, you know, we are all people that have as many uh, experienced pandemic. What do you think, Martha? Yes, it was amazing to have you here today. And uh, it's great that you truly have this feeling that we are all in this together and we will manage. Everything will be fine. No matter when this whole situation ends, we have a lot to learn. Uh, and uh, and the pandemic has uh, taught us quite a, a lot too. Yeah, in my opinion as well. So, Jonathan, thank you for being here. Alexandra. Thank you for being here. I think this was really great. I think we had a really fluent conversation. Yeah, yeah, we did. It was like truly, you know, coming from the heart. One thing also, another elephant in the room. We would like to thank also Agnes 
for providing ah, the, this. Uh, no. for providing <laughs> the shy, technical for high. providing the technical of course uh, you know equipment because without that this wouldn't reach perhaps our peers so Definitely. thank you Arns for that thank you so much and thank great. both of you thank for you. having yeah. this doing great work thank yeah, you that's incredible Thanks.